Welcome to this segment of Our Ventura TV. I'm Nicole Van Dam, and we have with us today Dr. Kenneth Kafka, who, as I see it, practices very personalized medicine. He may call it integrated medicine. Welcome, Dr. Kafka. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. For our viewers that might not be familiar with your areas of expertise, would you mind briefly explaining them? Sure. Um, well, I went to medical school, and then I chose to specialize in internal medicine, um, and which I became board certified in. And uh, then I uh, spent a few years after I finished my training working as an emergency room doctor. And then in 1990, um, in New York, where I trained, um, I opened up a private practice, which I called at that point integrative medicine. And the reason I called it that is, even though my training was very traditional, I had always been very interested in literally anything that heals. You know, why should we be closed off to other possibilities from other cultures, as an example? <clears throat> So, um, at that time, I was very interested in the impact that nutrition had on our health and also one state of mind or emotions, especially emotions. Emotions can be very potent. And so, I kind of saw myself as a general internist who was interested in, nutritionist, in, nu in, interested in nutrition and mind-body counseling. And shortly after I opened up my practice, this was again in 1990 in Manhattan, I started to see some AIDS patients. Now this was in the era when there really wasn't any good treatment for AIDS. So many of these wonderful young men who came to me, mostly from Greenwich Village, they're all usually pretty creative, you know, were interested in all kinds of other things that could help them heal, like acupuncture and homeopathy and um, different types of body work. Um, and also um, nutritional medicine intravenously, or intravenous nutritional medicine, which really caught my eye as something that could support the immune system. So I became, uh, working with those, those men really opened me up to um, other venues that I was always aware of and was open to, but I really hadn't had much exposure. Um, Just to go back for a second, when, when you were practicing ER medicine, you were working with, was it Cornell and Sloan Kettering? Yeah, I, was, uh, I trained at, uh, at New York Hospital, which is part of Cornell University Medical Center, and at Sloan Kettering, which is across the street where I was exposed to the cancer training. That's part of my overall training. So this was in, in Manhattan, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It's a very excellent academic medical center, renowned. It was a great place to train and learn stuff. W would you say that um, <coughs> looking at what you had to do with the AIDS patients where you had to look outside the box mm -hmm. versus what you did in ER medicine, was one more compartmentalized than another, a different focus of how you treat people? Well, I mean, they're almost, almost opposite. I mean, the traditional medicine was focused on treating the infections and the various alternatives were on trying to boost the immune system, um, looking, at, looking at the body as, which can be done by a variety of different methodologies or types of medical practice. So one was very holistic in its approach and one was very focused on what medicines can we do and, and you know the testing is certainly very important and they were both really really important at that time so it it very it fit very well with my own um, bent towards you know being open-minded and interested in the various different things that are used around the world so the traditional medicine at that point in this particular example is very compartmentalized and so to you give the viewers like a real world example, let's say uh, like an intestinal disorder, like irritable bowel, what would a traditional medicine look at? And then what would, you, well, what would the, someone who does integrative look uh, at? Irritable bowel is actually one of those things that's very close to being in between conventional and alternative or holistic. It's actually called, uh, when the tests are done in conventional medicine, when someone has cramps and, 
intermittent diarrhea and a variety of different symptoms. A lot of testing is done. Usually there's a colonoscopy and some blood tests and maybe a very basic s stool analysis. And certainly uh, a, a good gastroenterologist would ask about the stress in the person's life because that always affects the GI tract. But if, if there's nothing, no specific pathology found with that testing, then it's called, well, you have IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. And, and that's called functional, that, that's actually in traditional medicine called a functional problem. So in functional medicine, it's really right at the intersection of, of these two worlds. In functional medicine, there are a variety of different other testing that can be done. Uh, for example, um, a comprehensive digestive analysis, which ought to be done by conventional gastroenterologists. It's a shame that it's not, which looks in much greater detail at the intestines, the lining of the intestines, the integrity of the lining, the immune system that is part of the lining, um, the, the whole microbiome or all the different bacteria that grow there, and not just the ones that are well known to cause symptoms. Um, it's a, uh, whether there's a subtle inflammation, and sometimes you can tell with the type of testing where in the gastrointestinal tract it is. Mm -hmm. So um, a functional medical doctor, which is part of this, or, um, and that's oh, part uh, of what you do, functional yeah, medicine. Yeah, this is, this is almost the essence of functional medicine, is a, is a, is a more high-level microscopic view of, um, of the, the tissues in the body and how it relates to absorption, nutrients, and function. Is it still scientific testing well, you do? It's very scientific. It's very high-level scientific, scientific testing, yes. It's just not part of the routine testing that's taught in medical school. But it's, you know, it's tolerated more and more by conventional uh, physicians, especially when they see over years that people get help. So, so what, type, what so type of tests are they? I mean, is it like blood tests or? I mean well, so that per that particular one would, is mostly a, a, a stool analysis, but there can be urine tests that would also, in someone who has irritable bowel, which is just this great example that you brought up, to look at their neurotransmitters. In other words, the things in their brain that affect their moods and their and, and their stress levels, because stress is very very intimately connected to the gut. So some people, when you take a history of, and they do end up with a diagnosis of irritable bowel, it's fairly predictable when they're going to have symptoms, is when there's a certain type of stress, when they go home to their, um, you know, <laughs> when, they, when they see uh, an ex, you know, if they have, are having problems with a family member, when they're under the stress of a boss that so just So there's really triggers. Tr absolute triggers, yeah. And triggers is a big part of functional medicine. It's always looked at as what are the triggers? When did this start in your life? The, the history is, is also very, it's very important for both traditional as well as um, integrative medicine, but there might be a little bit of a greater focus in integrative medicine on when did things really start in your life and Can what were the circumstances? That isn't, now old fashioned medicine from the early 1900s, Doctors would go to the home. They would see the, the family situation, the entire social environment, what the stressors were. And a lot of the treatments then are actually what are considered to be now alternative, but they preceded conventional medicine or pharmaceutically oriented medicine. So, so does functional medicine help people avoid uh, traditional pharmaceutical medicines? It, uh, it certainly can. Uh, you can't just say, well, sure, in all cases. You know, modern medicine ha is wonderful. It's miraculous when it's used properly, which mostly is when it's used for an acute situation for a brief period of time. But nutritional approaches, uh, herbal approaches, dietary uh, approaches, use of certain amino acids, um, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, um, regular American herbs, South American herbs, Rush, uh, African herbs. You know, the, all the cultures have their own um, pharmacy of natural products. And as you become, as you're exposed to all these different things, 
you start to see how extraordinary the world of healing is and how you just can't be closed-minded. You're, you're not serving uh, the patient if you're really terribly closed-minded. And is In my opinion, this is just true for me anyway. Is, is genetic testing a part of this at all? Yes, now that we can, can test people's genomes very easily, the amount that we have to learn about the genome is astronomical. But in this very embryonic stage of understanding genetics, you can start to learn about uh, certain people may need certain forms of vitamins in order to be healthy. Um, other people, you can do a genetic test and you see that they don't break down stress hormones or stress neurotransmitters well. And so those levels are always high in them. And they're usually very highly functional people who are very ambitious, have high goals, um, function in sixth gear most of the time, and then they burn out because the body doesn't keep up with that. So um, when you can find out these things genetically and explain to someone, well, look, this is how you've always been and it served you really well, but you need to do some other things now to create some balance in your life so you don't deplete yourself so much. And they know that there's a genetic reason that makes sense to them. It's very eye-opening. Same thing, some people don't make internal antioxidants very well. And antioxidants, which we get predominantly from food other than the ones we make in our body, you know, counteract all the free radicals or the things that cause inflammation in the body that contribute to disease. So when you see, gee, this person doesn't make glutathione, which is the major antioxidant that the body makes, they have faulty genes there. And then you say to them, you're the type of person who's going to need to eat really carefully. And you're going to have to take a few extra supplements your whole life you know, optimally. Um, you're probably really sensitive when you're in, uh, you know, in a busy city where there's a lot of smog. Um, and they look at you and they go, yeah, that's exactly how I am. And it's a simple, and so it helps. It helps the doctor, it helps the, the patient, you know, have a better acceptance of themselves. So the type of medicine you practice in this industrial world is actually a focused, personalized type of medicine. Uh, it yes. exists out there, is what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. All, all good medicine that isn't for just an, well, all good medicine has to be personalized to varying degrees. But when someone has complex problems or chronic problems, the need for a greater personalization is, is, is larger. And so it's not in place of traditional medicine, it's in addition to, is what you're, what well, you're saying. Well, I call it integrative medicine because I'm open to anything that works. There's alternative medicine and a lot of holistic practitioners and a lot of people who are very afraid of conventional medicine. And they have good reason. You know, they maybe grew up with someone who, who one of their family members, God forbid, you know, got really sick in the hospital instead of getting better, which is a rarity. I don't want to give a wrong example there. Or they saw somebody or they were given a wrong medication and the doctor just, you know, said, well, that's the right medication, you should just take it. And so they don't feel... Secure. Uh, yeah, they sometimes don't feel that they're being seen or that their real needs are being addressed. But um, that's, it's just like any of the other uh, modalities of healing. For me, having the training that I have, I'm very grateful. Because I think the training in traditional medicine is great. The overemphasis that has evolved in the medical industrial complex of modern civilization on technology and pharmaceuticals is what's turning people off to a degree. The technology can be extraordinarily helpful. The medications can be too. It's just that's where the total focus it's is. A and balance. The, the person gets lost, you know. As that has progressed so fast, the soul of medicine has, you know, and the insurance companies because of how much time, you know, people can spend with patients. So that, that doctor in 1920 who went to someone's house who could spend time at the bedside and see everything, that's gone. You know, Kenny, I could talk to you for so much longer, but we're almost out of time. Okay. Is there a concluding thought that you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, um, you know, 
I have a sign in my office. It's right above the exam table, and it says, bodies listen to their inhabitants, not their doctors. And I try to make sure people see it, because I can give an enormous amount of advice to somebody, but really, the greatest power that someone has is, is within them over their own health, over their habits and their life choices. And, and, and that can be true for a minor situation as well as for something that can be very serious. So I think people really do need to know that there are times when you give your power away to a doctor to get healed or a practitioner of some kind to get healed. And, but all the time you have to know what you really feel and think inside of what is right for you. And is there a website that people can go to to learn more? Yes, it's a simple one. It's uh, www.kennethkafka.com. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. Kafka. Thank you for having me, Nicole. This has been fun. This is Nicole Van Dam signing off for this segment of Arventura TV. Until next time, be happy and well.